Yeah, so good evening everyone. So today we'll look at uh, this I'm a problem from 2018 and uh, this is problem 6 uh, and I'll show you uh, a very simple solution to this problem. So all right, so this is the problem. It says there's a convex quadrilateral and it satisfies the product of the opposite sides are equal. So A, B, C, D. Uh, and so here is the tricon. So it says A, B into C, D is B, C into D. So this product of these two red lines is equal to the product of two blue lines. So there's a point X inside A, B, C, D. So it's that this X, uh, the angle it makes with this side and the angle it makes with these sides, so they're equal. And the angle it makes with this side, they're equal. So this is these two angles are equal and these two angles are equal. So what we have to show is that it's uh, the angle BXA plus DXZ uh, is equal to 180 degrees. So basically this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees. So from the first look, it's, uh, this is a very symmetric problem and uh, the result that we want to show is also a symmetric result. And it's uh, somehow difficult to believe that uh, the problem would be that hard or anything. So, uh, uh, so this is what we have to show. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so let's see what the solution and uh, the solution is actually quite simple if you use um, complex numbers. So, let's just start. So, we choose this point which uh, satisfies this angle as as my origin and I label these four vertices with the complex numbers uh, like this. So this is my origin. Uh, I call these four sides as Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. And for the timing, it's not important whether this point O is, uh, you know, it's whether it's unique or there are multiple points. So if there are multiple points, you can do it one by one and every time you can change the origin to to different points and do the calculations um, again and again. So, uh, let's also label the, the sides. This is A, B, C, D. It's, uh, what is given is that A into C is B into D. And uh, we call this angle as omega 1. This is omega 3. We can call this as omega 2. I have not shown it here, but uh, this is omega 2. This is omega 4. Let's call this length OZ1. Uh, this is P, so let's call this one Q. This is R, this is S. So we have all the sides um, are labeled, all the lengths are labeled, all the angles are labeled. And what we have to show is that omega 1 plus omega 3 is pi. So uh, here we need, you need to know a little bit about the rotation of these vectors uh, in the complex plane. So, rotation of unit vectors. So these are not vectors, uh, uh, but it's in the complex plane, these are called phases or, or whatever. But basically, if you have a, a unit vector, let's say in this in this direction, and you want to rotate it by an angle alpha to get a unit vector in this direction, you basically multiply it with e to the power minus i alpha, right? So just something like this. So, uh, so suppose I want a unit vector in this direction, so that will be z1 minus z2. So that will be a vector which starts from z2 and ends at z1. So the tip is at z1 and tail is at z2. And you want to convert it to a unit vector, so I divide it by its length. So now you have a unit vector here. You multiply with e to the power i alpha, so you get a unit vector in this direction. So that is z1 divided by its length, so that's z1 by p. So similarly, you can do this for all sides. So, uh, unit vector here, rotate it with beta, you get a uh, unit vector in the direction z2, so you get this. For this side, you will have this one. For the fourth side, you will have this one. And you can also have this. So you have a unit vector in the direction of z1. You rotate it by omega 1, you get a unit vector in the direction z2, right? So we have z1 by p, that's a unit vector in the direction of oz1, and you rotate by omega1, so you multiply this with 
ei e to the power i omega 1 and you end up with a unit vector in the direction of oz2 that's z2 divides by it and divided by its length so that's z2 by q so similarly for the all other sides so this is omega 2 okay so i have not labeled it but uh, as you can see this is omega 1 this is omega 2 this angle is omega 3 this rotation is uh, omega 4 so for all the angles you can write so z2 you rotate it by omega 2 you get z3 so from z2 you get z3 z3 you rotate by omega 3 you get z4 and uh, z4 you rotate by omega 4 you get z1 so so it's from um, the look of the problem it's uh, to me, it kind of seems like uh, just by playing around with this, I, I should be able to um, get the desired result. So let's uh, see the. I think that there are, there are many ways uh, that you can actually show it. I'll just show you one. Uh, okay. So let's say you start with this and these two relations. So that's this one and this one. So um, this one sec. Oh, all right. So, uh, all right. So, uh, you start with this uh, this rotation and this rotation here. So, from here, this one, I can write z2 in terms of z1, right? So, e to pi alpha, i alpha, I bring it to this side, and basically, then you bring z2 to the other side. And this z2, I again get it back to z1 by this rotation here. So, this z2 value, I just plug it here, and z1 will go away, and basically, I have this relation. Similarly, with the you know this, I can do that with this remaining three uh, or remaining six uh, rotations that I wrote, wrote here, and you get a similar result. So we have first we have this, and then with other three uh, other three set here, you get these other rotations. So basically, what I have done here is I have removed the complex number z1, z2, z3, z4, and I only have the sides and the angles okay so now i want to get omega 1 plus omega 3 so uh, kind of a natural thing is to just multiply these two the first and the third term and you can also multiply this second and the third term you get omega 2 plus omega 4 but omega 2 plus omega 4 is 2 pi minus omega 1 plus omega 3 so it's natural to sort of multiply these two also right? you multiply these two first and third you multiply the second and fourth and basically you get two equations which is this so it's pr and m uh, of this form so where basically i have written omega 1 plus omega 3 as omega so omega 2 plus omega 4 would be it's 2 pi minus omega 1 plus omega 3 so it's, that's 2 pi minus omega so e to the power e to the power minus, minus e to the power i of this uh, so one of the factors would be one so this is here is a minus sign here and uh, m equals this and n equals this so it's just i'm just trying to write it in a simple form so uh, now i just try to play around with this and uh, you have these two relations so what i first do is i multiply it with e to the power i alpha everywhere in this and e to the power i beta in everywhere in this and then i take an imaginary part so i can skip this M and N, the complicated lens here, and see what I get. So you take an imaginary part, you get this. You take an imaginary part of this one, you get this. So there's no N here, there's no M here. All right, so this is like, this is sine alpha, this will be minus sine alpha here. So, uh, and now I also would like to use the condition that AC equals BD. So I find AC from here, I find BD from there, and then I equate it. So AC I find here, BD I find here and I equate it and I get everything in PR and QS. Okay, so, so this equals this. I bring all the PR terms to one side and I bring the QS term to the other side and you end up this. And basically, this I bring it on top and uh, you apply the sine C plus sine D formula here. You know? So, uh, yeah, so sine alpha will come this side, sine beta will go this side, and you apply this sine C, sine beta plus sine B, beta minus omega, and you apply this. Sine C plus sine D formula, you get this, this, and what does this mean? So this means that if cos omega by 2 is not 0, then I can remove this and I get the other part of the equation. Okay, so if 
this factor is not, not zero, which is common here, so I can remove that and then I get this one. All right, so yeah, so this, this is what we have. We had these two equations and we did use that if cos omega 2 is, cos omega by 2 is not equal to zero, then this relation holds. And what exactly do we get if we, uh, if we try to work a little bit more on this? So what I do this time is I take these two equations again, and this time I multiply it with, with e to the power 2i alpha on this one, e to the power 2i beta on this one. Yeah, okay, so because uh, I, I would like to remove this ACBD term, so I mean, I've already used it, and I would like to see what I get if I have m and n. Okay, so I multiply this with e to the power 2i alpha, and I again take m as a part. So I get this, I take, uh, from, for this equation I get this, and I take a imaginary part, so I have all the sine terms here. And uh, yeah, so now you take the sine double A, sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta, so that I apply here on these two. And uh, so, and what I use is QS sine alpha plus omega alpha two, is equal to PR times this, you know. So this, this factor, I, I already have it here. This, I replace it with this one. And so I get basically this. And uh, I, uh, there, there is a sine alpha by sine beta term here. So sine alpha will cancel out and sine beta will go on that side. So all this sine alpha, yeah, and they will cancel out and sine beta uh, will, will take its place. So yeah, so fairly simple calculation. I uh, just do it a little bit more. I write this as sine A plus uh, sine B, and this uh, also I write it as sine A plus sine B uh, formula here. So this is sine A plus sine B plus sine, I mean, this is sine A plus B plus sine A minus B, okay? So here also this is sine A plus B and plus sine A minus B. And this factor two will be absorbed inside. So, and this part, this part, they will go away. And what you basically end up is with this here, so m sine beta is pr times this. So this factor, this factor goes out here. So, so this is one relation that we get. Yeah, all right, so uh, again, I I put the sine z minus sine d formula, so you get a factor of sine omega two out. Yeah, okay, so this the, this relation is all right. And I, this I can do with, with the other, other term also. So um, I multiply this with e to the power yeah, e to the power my 2i beta here, and I can straight away write uh, write the result. So m will be replaced with n sine beta. Uh, I mean beta and alpha will interchange position, and this omega will be minus omega. Yeah. So from from the symmetry of the equation, we see that omega will be replaced with minus omega. Alpha and beta will interchange places. So I I'll basically have this. So m will be replaced with n sine beta will be sine alpha. Pr will be go to qs. Omega will be minus omega, and <coughs> this will be minus of this. Beta minus alpha will become alpha minus beta, and minus omega 2 will be plus omega by 2. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so the, you can straight away write this result, uh, but I'll just sort of, uh, I just write down all the calculations here so that you can just verify that it's all right. Okay, so for this we have, so at the end we basically have this. So if cos omega by 2 is not equal to zero, then we have these two relations that we derived. And what does it imply? So I basically divide it, yeah, sine omega by two and minus omega two by two, that will go away. And this is like, if this is theta, then this is minus theta. So cosine of that, they, 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 they will also be gone, yeah, yeah, so they, they are equal. And uh, yeah, so, what remains is this, m by n equals uh, minus pr by qs and sine alpha by sine beta. So m, m is what, mn is what? It's a linear combination of the sides. And this is a, basically a contradiction. Why? Because this side is positive and here everything is positive, but there's a negative sign here. Okay. So, Uh, yeah, so this is a contradiction which basically means that cos omega by 2 has to be 0 and that means omega has to be pi. So alright, so this was a very simple problem and when uh, it was shown to me, it was, uh, people said that this is the hardest 
uh, I have a problem ever or something like that. So I, I don't think this is the case. It's uh, the problem is fairly straightforward. Uh, just um, yeah. So what I would really like is that what we did is uh, you know this uh, transformation with complex number. You try to convert it into uh, into geometry. See what exactly is happening in the geometric plane, and uh, you. Uh, yeah, so you do that and uh, see if you can actually find a, a nice uh, geometric proof for this uh, for this problem uh, using a similar method. So, so hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to write to me, if you have anything to say, you can uh, just email me uh, or you can write in comments. So please, uh, if you like the video, uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe my channel and. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.